Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Zach and if you've ever been working on a creative project and you want to know how to interact with yourself in a video by cloning yourself, then that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Let's, Let's get, get into, into it. it. Alright, so cloning yourself is a fun tool that I've had to resort to multiple times in the past, just purely out of limitations with myself um, during the whole uh, pandemic thing that happened over the last couple of years I had to pump out a lot of videos for my church and uh, often I only have myself to do it so I tested around with all these different methods for being able to clone yourself some of them are as simple as just masking two clips out and putting them together with a tripod shot um, some of them are a little bit more complex and require like a green slash blue screen which you can pick up on Amazon I'll have a link below if you want to purchase that but it's really not a complex thing to do so I'm gonna show you how you can do it in the most simple way and how to make it look as realistic as possible okay so the first thing you're gonna to want to do is think through your shots in advance so that when the time comes for you to get in the computer and piece them together you've already thought out how it's all gonna play out and how it's gonna work and how you're gonna put the pieces together because it's much easier to do this once you've thought ahead and prepared to do it for the way you're going to do it so decide in advance how you're going to piece it together then we'll get into the computer and I'll show you how I did it with some of the clips from that last video. Okay, so the first clip I had in the sequence was me just slapping nothing. And I set it up so that I would have the empty chair. That's where I was going to sit in the next clip. But and then in order to make the lighting match, what I did with my blue screen clip, um, and I used blue instead of green because it has less spill around the edges, and uh, I've just found that it's easier to work with most of the time. It just depends on your scene. Um, but then you drag in your blue screen clip on top of that, and you want to line up where the hit happens. So right here, and I can see on the audio, I kind of made a little noise. That's where I wanted to react. So right about there is the hit. And then I'm just gonna drag this out. And then what I did was I went down to masks, draw a mask, and just kind of, I'll just do this quickly here. But you kind of just draw the mask around the screen because you're gonna want to eliminate everything else that's around it. And then once you do that, you're gonna want to go down to your keying effects, where you can just search in the search bar for keyer. And that'll come up and there you go. Now the blue screen is gone, but we have a little bit of refining to do, as you can see, with making that blend a little bit more. So we're gonna go over to our effects panel over here in the keyer and refine the key a little bit. So best way I've found to do this is to go to the matte tools and kind of play around with this until you are able to kind of get it about to where you want it to be for that to be gone. And I'm not gonna shrink or expand it, that just really affects the edges, but my edging was really nice. One of the things I forgot to mention earlier is you're gonna wanna make sure you light your screen well and evenly if possible, because uh, if I just relied on the lighting in this room, then it would've been really difficult to make out the edges of that screen from me. So you wanna make sure to light your screen really well. And in this situation, I like the little portable screens because I could put that over and basically um, use the exact same lighting and the exact same setup that I already was for the previous clip, which means I'm already gonna blend into this clip much easier than if I were to just get in some studio somewhere and shine some lights on myself. You can do it that way and you can mimic lighting and a lot of people do it and it's fine. But I like the portable ones because then you can just do it on set. You just move that little screen there, shine a light on it, and there you go. You're already in the scene so you don't have to do much color correcting later. Something else I really like about Final Cut is they have this light wrap feature, which you can see there's this light right on the other side. So part of what makes it blend really well into the scene is you can turn that light wrap on and you'll see that the highlights will wrap around my hat and my face in a natural way. Obviously you don't want all the way up. So I think I did somewhere around, you know, like 15, uh, maybe like 18%, did something like that. So it helps blend into the scene a little bit more. Now. If you remember, my shirt was gray, and here it's looking a little bit 
brown. So I'm just gonna go over to my effects. I'm gonna actually desaturate it all quite a bit because when I darkened the keyer, it actually brought in a little more saturation than I wanted. So that helps this blend even a little bit more. I wanna add a little bit of contrast still. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a color wheel and try to make it blend a little bit more. So something like that already, you, you can see I haven't done a whole lot to it, but it's already looking way better just with that. And you can see that it kind of interacts. If I were to play this, you can see that it, it kind of goes over pretty well. And the colors are really good. It's blended into the scene very good. Now, one of the things that you can see, an extra thing that just adds a little bit of flavor to this, is that when I kind of turn my back from the camera, oh, on that original footage, I go out of focus. Which means, during the rest of the time, I should have been on the blue screen, the added layer should have been a little bit out of focus until this moment where in the original footage it goes out of focus. So it should shift focus and rack a little bit. And uh, so something that'll just add a little bit more realism to it is to go up to blurs, grab a Gaussian blur, put it on there. And then right at this moment here, when I turn around and go out of focus, that's where I'm going to add a keyframe for this blur. And I'm going to probably have it like only about a three. Set a keyframe until the original footage is fully out of focus. And then I'm going to bring that back into focus to showcase me here spitting. And then it's about that time I turn around and the focus racks back. So I'm going to set another keyframe. And let's focus shifts back. I'm going to blur this a little bit more again. And at this point, I'm further away from myself. And so I'm turning that up a little bit more because the blur would be more accentuated. So once you put that all together, it looks like a normal focus racking that should have been there from the beginning. I'm gonna drag that out a little bit more so you can see how it would look if that shot continued on the way I think I had it in the video. Ouch, that hurts. Focus and focus back. You can kind of see. So those are all little things that you can do to just blend it together and make it look a little bit more realistic. That's what I did for this shot. Oh, and then I forgot to mention that you can then create a compound clip or if you're in Premiere, this is known as nesting, but you can just put that all together as one clip, color grade it, and then make it match that way with one consistent creative grade and then add a camera shake as well, which there's lots of ones that you can find online. There's one that's baked into Final Cut, which is called Handheld. Um, but I found these just, I think on YouTube, I just YouTubed like handheld plugins for Final Cut and these came up and they've been great. And so you can just pick whatever one you think works best. You can, I usually take off the rotation and then turn this up to like 30 for the smoothness so it's not super micro jittery. And then you have this one entire shot that is completely consistent by itself. And many of the other shots in this sequence were, were a lot easier because I didn't even use the blue screen. I just clipped it out. So let's see here, that's as far as I'm rolling forward. So then I'm just gonna go back to my masking tool Boom. And I'm just gonna create points. Easy as that, and then you want it as distanced as much as possible, about in the middle, I would say, as much as possible, because then you can add that feather quite a bit, and it's not going to 
take away from either scene and it'll blend it together a little bit better. And there you go, voila, together in the same scene. It's that easy. So those are some quick and simple ways that you could just think out your shot in advance and interact. Something I meant to do in this shot and I forgot to do was I was actually going to off camera hold up something like pretend my hands were tied up and then hold something in front of myself to create a little bit of shadow. This isn't doing much. I some text documents. And I was going to just off a scene, I was gonna add like some on a stick, something that just would block the light out of frame, hold it up there and create like a shadow so it looked like my other version of myself was going to be interacting a little bit better, uh, but then I forgot, so I didn't. But those are little things like that to just add some elements that, you know, if you've thought it through, you're gonna be interacting with yourself. So there would be shadows and there would be different stuff like that. If you think through that kind of stuff, then you can often pull that off even by yourself. If you just get a little bit creative. So super simple, fun video. Hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. If you like this video, it would help me out tremendously if you could just give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, because I would love that and you'll get notified whenever I post new content. So if you're a nerd about cameras or making videos or use Sony or are transitioning from a micro four thirds system to a full frame system like I have recently done on the a7 IV, then subscribe and follow along because I'm going to be talking about some of the differences in those cameras and how I can actually, I do still use them both together on shoots um, and get them to play nice with each other in post. And so it is possible, it is uh, possible to save some money when you are transitioning camera systems. And uh, if you're interested in the differences and the learning curve and some of those things, then again, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be coming out with more content talking about that kind of stuff. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Then that's what we're going to be talking about. Let's get into it. Then if I pop out like right here. In this video, let's get into it. One more time.